Hi YouTube, this is Angie the Anti-Theist, and this is part three on my Adam and Eve series. I think that this is an incredibly important story within the Christian faith because it's the explanation for the problem of pain and for the introduction of our sinful nature. And it's what creates the necessity for Christ's sacrifice and for salvation and atonement in order to be in God's presence. It's an important story. That being said, I'd like to talk today about two specific trees mentioned in Genesis as being in the Garden of Eden, one being the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, which we should all be familiar with by now, and the other being the tree of life, which grants immortality to whoever eats from it. According to the story, God made Adam and Eve, heaven and earth, creepy things that creepeth, crawly things that crawleth, and these two trees, and stuck them all in a big garden together and called it Eden. They met the snake, ate the fruit, God got pissed, kicked him out, and then put an angel with a big flaming sword in front of the tree of life to prevent them from eating from it and becoming immortal. I have a few questions about this story, Christians. The first question is, why did God put the tree of the knowledge of good and evil in the garden if he didn't want them to eat from it? Seems like a risky maneuver for a God whose plan is predicated on them not eating from that tree. Some Christian out there is probably saying, free will, free will. God had to give them free will. And uh, to that I say bollocks. Uh, Adam had already shown that he had free will in other areas in e within Eden. For example, God offered him each animal in turn as his helpmate. Adam denied all of them, and so God created him Eve. Adam wasn't satisfied with the animal mate, and so God made him a woman. Um... So, again, tree of the knowledge of good and evil isn't necessary for free will. The consequences are extremely dire. Their free will isn't based on their morality or their sense of right and wrong, since they don't have that. It seems like there really was no need for God to put the tree of the knowledge of good and evil in the garden, unless, of course, he wanted to be disobeyed and wanted to punish them and wanted us to all be born with a sinful nature in a fallen world. My second question is, why the serpent? Seriously, an omnipotent and omniscient God can't see where that one's going to go wrong? Why even let the snake in the garden? Why make it capable of communicating effectively with Eve and Adam and with presenting a, a compelling argument as to why they might want to eat from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil? Is this serpent totally screwing up God's plan? Does one snake have the ability to throw off his desire for humanity to live with him in paradise and to never have to work hard or go through any suffering? Or was that part of God's plan all along and the serpent was actually necessary and so God cursing the serpent and then Adam and Eve is kind of a dick move? My third question has to do with the angel and the flaming sword. Why put it around the tree of life and not the tree of the knowledge of good and evil? Why not start with the angel protecting the tree? If the tree's got to be in the garden for some reason, fine. But God doesn't have a problem with stopping their free will option of eating from the tree of life. So why can he also have put an angel with a flaming sword in front of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil? God allows the bad thing to happen but prevents the good. So why the tree? Why the snake? Why not the angel? Finally, if Adam and Eve had eaten from the tree of life before the angel got put there, do you suppose God would have let them keep their immortality? Or do you think he would have taken it from them during the cursing process? What's more, if somebody had gotten to that apple somehow afterwards and eaten from it, would God have allowed them to have mortality? Or would he have a immortality? Or would he have tried to take it from them as well? The tree of life actually an option? Was it ever? All right, that's all for today, Christians and Muslims and any other believers or non-believers who enjoy my videos. I hope to hear responses from you soon. Video responses would be best, of course, but text comments are always welcome as well. Thanks so much, and everyone have a great and godless day. Take care.